Dino is a modern runtime environment. It's secure by default and a lightweight approach to running server-side JavaScript, TypeScript, and WebAssembly, and it uses modern web best practices. By the end of this video, you'll understand how to install Dino as well as use a handful of its essential features. So let's hop over and get started with the install. To install Dino, we need to navigate over to dino.land to view the install instructions. When you get to the Dino homepage, if you scroll a bit down, you'll see instructions for how to install on Mac, Linux, and Windows. Since I'm on a Mac, I'm going to copy this curl command, open my terminal, and paste it there. After Dino is successfully installed, the next step is to manually add the directory to your home zshrc file. So I'm going to open my zshrc file and copy and paste these two lines. Save and close the file. After a successful install, you may need to close your terminal and relaunch the application. Let's go ahead and make this window a bit bigger. You can confirm you have the latest version of Dino by running Dino dash dash version. Since Dino was properly installed, let's go ahead and create a app.js file, open it in VS Code so we can explore some of Dino's key features. We can start with a simple console.log with the message hello slack devs. We can run this using VS Code's built-in terminal and the command dino run and our file's name. The message was printed to our terminal and we're up and running with Dino. If we wanted to see the changes made to app.js, we'd have to change the file, save the file, and rerun the command dino run app.js. Or we could use Dino's built-in file watcher, which restarts the application as soon as files are changed and saved. This could be done simply by adding the watch flag. Now we can see the output of changes made to app.js immediately after saving. Let's shift gears and do something a bit more fun. For this portion, we're going to reach out to an API, get some data, and write that data to a local file using Dino. All of this can be done using Dino's native features. The API that we're going to be using for this demo is a free and open API called dog.ceo, which has a bunch of information about dogs. This is the endpoint we're going to use, so let's copy it because we'll need it in just a second. Dino supports top-level awaits, meaning you can use the await keyword outside of a function. As mentioned before, Dino also supports modern web APIs, so we also have access to fetch right out of the box. Let's fetch the list of all dog breeds from the dog.ceo API. First up, we're going to extract the JSON body content from the response object, and then console.log the data. If we tried to run this file using the dino run file name, we'd be met with a network access warning. That's because dino is secure by default. If we want our application to have environment access or access to a network or a local file, we have to specifically enable it. We can allow network access by using the allow net argument with a value of our desired hostname or IP address. Now we're able to get the data we're looking for. I haven't heard of half of these dog breeds, but we'll go with it. If we wanted to go one step further and write this data to a local file, Dino has us covered with a native write text file method. It takes two arguments, a file name, as well as the data that you want to write to that file. We're going to write our data to a file called dogbreeddata.json, and we're going to send the stringified JSON data to that file. And since we want our application to interact with our file system, we also have to grant our application access to do so with the allow write flag. You can find a full list of Dino's available permissions here. Our dog breed data successfully created the dog breed data JSON file since it didn't already exist and wrote that data here. But the dog breed information isn't quite human readable. So we can go ahead and use Dino FMT with our file name to format that file. The Dino formatter can be customized by using a configuration file or by using CLI flags. 
And lastly, I want to highlight how easy it is to import modules from Dino's standard library. We're going to be testing the isEven function, which takes in a number and returns true if the number is divisible by 2, or false if it's not. We need access to the assert equals module from Dino's standard library, and here we can actually set which version of the Dino standard library we want to use to get more control of outside information we're bringing in to our application. Using the built-in Dino test method, we can set our first argument to be our test name. And for our second argument, we can use an anonymous function as well as the assert equals module to test that our isEven function with a argument of 2 will return true, as well as our isEven function with a value of 3 should also return true according to this test. We can use the command dino test to run all test files. It seems that one of our test cases is failing. That's because three should return false. So we can go ahead and change that and rerun the Dino test command. And after making that quick fix, all of our tests are passing. If you've used Node.js before, you'll notice that in Dino, there is no package.json file and no node modules folder. This is to reduce some of the boilerplate that developers shouldn't have to worry about, as well as tighten security within your project. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Also, let us know if you're using Dino or you're sticking with Node.js. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. See ya!